Next, we look at simulated annealing. Just now, we have revised what is a local search in general and the hill climbing search in particular. So now we want to understand what is simulated annealing. Simulated annealing is very similar to hill climbing search, but it is specific to a physical meaning which is called annealing. What it means is that we have a function where we try to anneal the problem towards the solution. Now we shall examine simulated annealing. Now in case of simulated annealing, this is an example of a hill climbing algorithm. It's, it's a specialized case of a hill climbing algorithm. The hill climbing algorithm has a problem. It never makes a downhill moves. So it always tries to go for a better state, whether it's downhill or uphill. It will always go to the lower value or higher cost. So in that case, it can get stuck on local maxima. On the other hand, we have the other extreme, which is a purely random walk. So we simply move to a successor, which is chosen uniformly at random from a given set of successor that is complete, but it is really inefficient. So what if we want to find an approach which is between hill climbing and random walk? So somehow it is efficient as well as complete. That algorithm would be simulated annealing. Let's try to first understand annealing. Annealing is a metallurgical process. What we do here is we temper or harden metals or glass and we heat it to a higher temperature and then gradually cool it. So what that means is it, it reaches a low energy crystalline state and it's simply a better solution. However, what we're going to look here is from the point of view of gradient descent, minimizing cost. So let's suppose our task is a ping pong ball and we're trying to throw it on the deepest possible space on a bumpy surface. So if we just let that ball roll, it will settle to a local minimum. We shake it again, the ball moves out of the local minimum, but then maybe to another local minimum. So keep shaping the ball again and again. We shake it enough number of times so that it, we're unable to dislodge it from a global minimum. So the simulated annealing solution is by shaking hard, which is called the temperature, high temperature, then gradually reducing the intensity of shaking, which is called lowering the temperature. So the algorithm starts by means of a function. So let's look at the algorithm itself. So this is a function simulated annealing and it takes two things, problem and a schedule, and it returns a solution state. So let's look at these two. First, a problem. This is the problem which has been formulated and a schedule which is a mapping from the time to the temperature. Then we've got some local variables, the current, the next, both are nodes and T is something which we call the temperature or the controlling probability of downward moves. We start similar to hill climbing, we create an initial node and then we assign the T, the temperature with the schedule based on T, which is the current loop variable. So in the start, it will be one. If this is zero, 
then we simply return the current because we're looking for the minimum otherwise we find a randomly selected successor of the current and then we take a variable which is delta e and this is the difference from this value and the next one value of next minus value of current so if delta e is greater than zero then current is assigned the next otherwise current will be next only with a probability so here is the random walk feature so we've got e raised to power delta e which we found over here divided by t which is from the schedule so this is uh, something similar to the real world nature of an elite Next, we look at the properties of simulated annealing. Simulated annealing has been used in a number of cases. So we've got examples in the case of uh, VLSI layouts, airline scheduling problems. And initially it was proposed in 1953. So we've got uh, if a thing called temperature so if we have a fixed temperature t then the state occupation probability reaches something called the Boltzmann constant distribution represented over here the probability so t decreases slowly enough it will always reach the best stage which we call x star And the reason for this is that this term is always greater than 1 for small t's. Now, whether or not this is an interesting guarantee, well, this is practical because it's been used as we just discussed in a number of problems. And you can optimize large scale problems using this methodology. What would be interesting is if we were to compare a random street start hill climbing on an eight queen puzzle with the same approach on simulated annealing. After simulated annealing, let's look at local beam search. In local beam search, the idea is that we actually keep not one successor, but we actually keep k different states and for these we choose the top k of all their successors it's not the same as k searches run in parallel because at, we're doing it at the same time so any searches which actually end up finding good results good states they actually recruit other state searches to join them in local beam search, useful information is passed among the parallel search threads. So what happens is that it generates the best successes, say to the other, which says, come over, the grass is greener. So the algorithm quickly abandons unfruitful searches and moves its resources wherever the progress is being made. Now, one of the problems with this search is that it does not have a diversity of states. So quickly it can become concentrated on a small region of the state space. So in that case, it will become similar to stochastic hill climbing. So for that, what happens is we add a probabilistic method to the search so instead of choosing the best from the pool of candidate successor what it does it it finds one of the successes at random and the probability is given by increasing function of its value 